inside, praying for mercy with nowhere to hide. There was a Savior searching for me, grace overflowing, set my soul free. stand in the midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and tongue we are your children redeemed by your blood rescued from death by your love there are no words good enough to thank there are no words to express my praise, but I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah. Hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. stand by grace in your presence we're cleansed by the blood of the lamb we are your children called by your name humbly we bow and we pray release your power to work in us and through us till we are changed to be more like you then all the nations will see
Page number 389, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. We're going to sing the first, second, and fifth verses together tonight. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing. Baptist Church tonight. We are so honored and grateful that you're here this evening and we're looking forward to a wonderful evening service. And again, I want to just thank you so much for being here. Raise your hand. I'm going to take a survey tonight if you got a good afternoon nap. Okay, wonderful. About 40%. That means that uh, we, we are not able to go for the length of two-hour preaching service tonight, so we'll keep it to the, to the minimum, and I'm joking with you, of course, but it's so good to see you tonight, and I trust you've had a good day. We thank the Lord uh, for the wonderful this service this morning. It was so good to see uh, first-time visitors and returning visitors throughout the auditorium, and uh, it was just a great attendance, great spirit, and I appreciate what God is doing. And we want to always, uh, you know, I hear things like this, uh, you know, this, is, this ministry is growing, this apartment, God's blessing. And we want to be careful always to give God the glory for everything. Because the moment we try to say, well, we, it, you know, yeah, we're God's blessing and the church is growing because of this or this. And we try to explain it, then, and then I'm afraid God will turn off the water spout of blessing. And we don't want that. And God, I believe, is looking for a, a church, a people that are wanting to say, I just want to praise the Lord uh, because he's worthy, isn't he? And it's all because of him. And we have much to praise him about tonight. If all we did was just meet tonight to say, uh, God is worthy to be praised and it would be good enough and to worship the Lord. But, uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and uh, let's pray for our nursery, wiggle worms, uh, young people over across the breezeway there in the educational building that God would bless them tonight. And then also I have many prayer requests that I want to share with you. And I do pray for Charles Petit. I uh, appreciate Haynes and Jen visiting them. And uh, Jen Lewis, Haynes Moore visiting them this week and being a blessing to them. And uh, perhaps some others. I know uh, a lot of our church family visit. And let me just take a moment to say I really appreciate the visits and the calls and the cards that are sent, the texts, the emails, whatever you do to reach out to our family, our church family that are sick and not able to be with us and so forth. I really appreciate that. I'm not able to do everything. I just honestly, I want to. My heart's there. Uh, sometimes I get overwhelmed a little bit because I just want to be there and I'm just not able to. But I really appreciate you just really being a church and just caring for one another and uh, as you can, and I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Uh, but do pray for him as he's there at the Novot Rehabilitation Center there on Stratford Road uh, with cancer and rehabilitation. Then also, let's pray for Ms. Dot Adams. She is home now, and uh, from the uh, Bermuda Commons, I, realize, I know that several people visit her there at Bermuda Commons there in advance. Continue to pray for her as she recovers at home. Also, let's pray for Brady Davis. Someone was asking me right before the service how he's doing. He's not doing well. Uh, he's not doing well at all. I got to see him in the hospital uh, back just, uh, I think, Thursday or Friday. And uh, he's just 
he's just not doing well. He's just really going downhill even more so since he's been in the hospital for that stretch of time. I'm going to uh, touch base with him again this week, first half of this week, and but do pray for him, if you will, uh, during this time. Also, uh, Bodsford family, uh, as we mentioned on the Colomau, as well as this morning, uh, that, uh, that graveside service will be a Tuesday uh, 2 o'clock there at the cemetery at Emmanuel Baptist Church there in Clemens. And uh, Miss Jenny May was a, is a widow, uh, excuse yes, widow lady, but also shut-in of our church and a sweet, wonderful lady. And I'm grateful to be her pastor for a few, for a few short years and, and uh, be a part of her life in a small way. But we're grateful for her, and uh, she's with the Lord today, and we're thankful for that. Do pray for that family, if the Lord, that, that the Lord would help them, especially on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Chad Allen is in the hospital right now and uh, Miss Carolyn had sent me a text early this morning and it's just been a really busy day and I wasn't able to follow up but uh, Melanie Weatherman has uh, followed up with me and uh, let me know that he did have a intestinal surgery yesterday. Uh, he has some more complications. He'll be in the hospital for uh, for a good little while now recovering from that uh, prob- probably all this week and so Chad's really having a hard time. I think he's got a feeding tube right now. Just really pray for him that the Lord would help him right now. He's really discouraged and, of course, Ms. Carolyn, do pray for them. Randy Smith, of course, continue to pray for them. Uh, Larry Smith with a very, very special prayer request for him. And then also uh, Hannah Craig's grandson, continue to pray for her and uh, with her grandson with cancer. And uh, the diagnosis is not good. So let's re- really uh, uh, lift her up in prayer, if you will, tonight. And then if you have a need uh, or you just need the Lord's help tonight, would you raise your hand? I certainly want the Lord to help me. And uh, so let's pray together and ask God for his strength and his blessings this this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to, to be back at church tonight. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for the sweet spirit of our church family. Thank you for their faithfulness, their dedication, their involvement. And Father, we thank you for that. And Father, we ask that you would help our church family tonight. We realize uh, some are sick, as the case is always is. And Father, some are at home watching online because they're physically unable to be with us. We ask you comfort them and help them. Those are in the hospital tonight, those who are recovering in rehabilitation centers, we ask that you be with them and help them tonight only as you can. Father, you know the needs of our church. You saw uplifted hands just a moment ago. You know the need behind that heart and that hand, and I pray that you'd meet those needs tonight. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts and our midst tonight. May you be honored and glorified through it all. And we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing in this place. Please continue to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir's going to sing for us. I know God will use them as you listen tonight.
I'm thankful I am on the winning side. I've read the last chapter of the prophecy to come, and I'm grateful that I know who wins this thing of the culture, this thing of the world, if you will. I'm on the winning side. I'm on the side of Jesus Christ, and that encourages me. Well done, choir. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing along with the choir this great song. Give it all you've got from your heart tonight. found their way back to their seat. I want us to think about the words of the second verse. There are blessings you cannot receive until you know him in his fullness and believe. You are the one to profit when you say, I'm going to walk with Jesus all the way. I know we sing these songs over and over again sometimes, and we, we sometimes we don't stop and listen to the words. I love this song because there's such a truth to it. There's a sweet spirit in this church, and when I came here, it's one of the things I was drawn to. It's the sweet spirit here. But the reality is, I'm mean sometimes. The sweet spirit is not because of me. It's not because of us. It's because the Holy Spirit of God is here. So I want us to think about the words as we do this second verse together tonight. Everyone sing out if you will. Just think about it as we sing.
and uh, I trust that you are revived when you live, leave this place. I know I am, and it's not uh, because of the preaching of the Word of God, although the Word of God does speak to my heart, but it's through your Spirit and the Holy Spirit of God, and we're grateful for that. And uh, I love the Temple Baptist Church. I'm grateful for uh, you that make it up, and we're grateful for the sweet spirit, as Brother Holly said just a moment ago. Ushers, you come at this time, if you will. Jalen, I don't know where you are. Come on up here, buddy. And uh, uh, I was reminded after I left the service or today as people were leaving, today is Building Fun Sunday. And they say, Pastor, I can't believe you forgot Building Fun Sunday. And, uh, and I did. I, I have it wrote down in everything, and, uh, but it still slipped my mind. And uh, I want to encourage you. Uh, if you missed this morning, to give double tonight, uh, uh, this is a joke, okay? Some of you are thinking, is pastor serious? Okay, and uh, but let's be faithful in our tithe and offering, whether it's giving online, templebabschurch.info, securely there, or whether it's giving in the plate, let's be faithful in our tithe and offering. And then, of course, Building Fund Sunday, uh, let's be a part of this. God is blessed tremendously in this area, and we're going to reveal that to you at the right time, And uh, but uh, the finances are needed, and they will be used. Lord willing, as we uh, seek the Lord and uh, seek his guidance on it, and, uh, but I, I can tell you the Lord is, is opening doors, and so I can't tell you everything right now, but uh, I can just ask you to give and pray, and so let's do those two things tonight. I appreciate this man right here beside of me. I love Jalen. I appreciate Brother Holly, too. He's down there a little ways. I love Brother Holly, of course, but I love Jalen, and uh, Jalen and Hannah are doing so well as a married couple. They've just had a little baby. And I want to share this with you. I, I realize that when you have a baby, your life changes completely. Anybody want to testify to that? You, you think you've got it all together, and uh, you've read all the books, you've watched all the shows, you've watched all the YouTube channels about how to be a dad and how to be a mom, and then the baby comes, and you're like, let's throw this out the window. <laughs> every parent is different. Every baby's different. Every home is different. And what works for one family is not always going to work for you. But I believe with all my heart, if you put God first and you try to seek him, you be the best mom, dad you can be. God will help you. And you're unique to that child. I, there's something I heard not too long ago. It's very interesting to me. Um, when, you, um, when, you, uh, when you have a child, you know, there's all kinds of parenting seminars. And, all kinds, and I listen to that stuff, and I, I do. I, I want to learn how to be a better dad. And, uh, but I, I listened to these things, and I heard one person saying, it made a lot of sense to me. They said, God made you to be that parent of that child, and nobody else can be the parent of that child. And I thought that was very interesting. And I understand the stepdads, the stepmom, I understand all of that, and that's fine. If that's your case, I understand that. God can work through that area. But the way God uh, planned it was that child can, can be raised by you. And, and that child has got a little bit of you and your wife in there, and you, your husband in that child, and you have a direct in line to that child, and, uh, and you're, you have his heart in so many ways. But I appreciate Jalen and Hannah. They've been faithful through this uh, little baby, and, and many others have as well. But I just I saw him a while ago, and I said, hey, would you pray for us? And, and I appreciate him and Hannah. They've been just faithful. And, and I'm not just talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I'm talking about... Uh, when we knock on doors, he's here. Uh, when we say, hey, can we have a work day, here comes Jalen. And, uh, and Hannah's just involved as much as she can. And I love them, and I appreciate them. And I uh, appreciate young people that have a heart for the Lord and uh, that want to do something for the Lord. And just kind of behind the scenes, they don't have to be seen. They don't have to be heard. They're just there. And they're faithful and the sweet spirit. And I appreciate that. Jalen, pray for us, buddy. We love you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to say thank you. Uh, for having us here tonight, Lord, um, just uh, being here with your people, Lord, is just such a blessing, Lord, every Sunday night. Sometimes I wish we could just be here every day for at least 30 minutes, Lord, just revive, Lord, and Lord, I just want to say thank you for um, allowing us to labor. You gave us time to labor, Lord, and may we give back to you. Thank you for giving us the building to, to live in and to worship in, and may we give back to you, Father. And, Lord, may you empty us tonight and fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you, and we, and we give you all the honor and glory in your ho holy name. Amen. Amen.
instrumentalists. Uh, we have a couple announcements really quickly tonight. First, let's recognize our birthdays, anniversaries. We just have one tonight, and that is Brady Davis. And, of course, Brady, at this moment, as far as I know, is still at Forsyth Hospital. But his birthday is the 9th of this week. And so happy birthday to Brady. I don't know if he's watching or not able, or able to watch, but let's give him a hand tonight. All right, and then also a couple announcements real quick here. Don't forget about a Wednesday night service. Uh, looking forward to a wonderful Wednesday night. Will Lord willing be back in our series, uh, 1 Thessalonians. Don't miss that in here, 7 o'clock. And then also we'll be going uh, outreaching, knocking on doors, telling others about the Lord. Uh, and we'll have a meal for that as always on Wednesday night, 5 o'clock there in the activity center. And then we'll go out from 530 until 630. And we need a head count really quickly if you plan to come for the meal. And if you plan to do that, Brother Holly's going to count. Would you hold your hand up and hold it there for just a minute? And we're going to count. I don't know what Miss Holly, Miss uh, Honey is having uh, this week, but I, it's always wonderful. And uh, she does a great job. I appreciate her doing that and uh, taking the time to do that for those going out. And then also, uh, don't forget about team program, Kids for Truth program, all happening Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. A couple upcoming events. Young Adult Fellowship will be going to Frankie's. Uh, this Saturday, uh, rain or shine, I don't know if it's going to rain or sh I don't know, and I don't think the weather forecasters know either, but uh, whatever it happens, we're meeting here at 1.30, leaving the parking lot at 1.30, going down to Frankie's in Charlotte, it's actually in Huntersville, so it's about an hour and 15 minutes from here, we're meeting there at 2.45, some are meeting us there, meeting there at 2.45, and we're going to have a grand time together, laser tag is on the list and I feel a little spiritual there, and uh, we're going to have a great time with that. I'm kidding, of course, but we're going to have a great time with that. This is for ages 19 to 49, and I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, there's a lot of couples signed up already in the entryway, and if you haven't done so and you want to be a part of that, sign up, and uh, after that we'll be having a meal uh, down in the Huntersville area at a barbecue restaurant. We have a room reserved there for us, and then we'll be back around 8 o'clock or so, okay? Keep that in mind. Also, Friend and Family Day is next Sunday. Uh, raise your hand if you have invited at least one person some way or the other. Raise your hand. Okay, good. Wonderful. Let's continue to invite people. If you've invited somebody three or four weeks ago, remind them this week, okay? And, uh, and, and then I want you to call them Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, okay? Because this is time change. As we mentioned this morning, I, I made a mistake. I should not have done that. But you know what? The Lord can work things out. God can bless that. And sometimes our mistakes are God's ways of using it in a powerful way. And so I'm trusting and praying that the Lord will bless in a wonderful way. And uh, great attendance this morning. And uh, I think we're probably going to have to set out seats and a matter of fact, I'm just going to tell you right now, I think we're, going to, we're going to, Lord will, have some more seats set out. And uh, so we have room to set. You don't want the church, we, don't, we want the church filled, but what I'm saying is you, we want seats to still be available. If a family comes in and doesn't have anywhere to sit, that's not good. You don't want to get to that point. And so you want to be about 80% capacity. And so that you say, Pastor, there's empty seats. Well, we want those to be filled, but you, you want there to be availability. See what I'm saying? So um, let me just share one or two things with you about Friend and Family Sunday. One, if you know uh, that, there's going, that there's somebody here on Sunday morning and you know they're going to be back that night at 6 o'clock, the service, bypass them. Just don't shake their hand. Just go past them like this. Shake the hands of the first-time visitors, okay? And you know what I'm saying. Take it with a grain of salt, okay? Be, you, be, you don't be rude to our regulars. You understand. But what I'm getting at is... Make sure that you make a beeline to those first-time visitors. You do that, and I'm just trying to encourage you with that. If you know somebody's going to be here Wednesday night or Sunday night, you'll get to speak to them on Sunday night. But let's hit the visitors. Let's, there ought to be a, a, a four- or five-person lineup behind every first-time visitor. And you do that. I can't thank you enough for making people feel welcome. And let's continue that even with Friends and Family Sunday because the idea is not just to have a big number, you know, the idea is to reach these families and these people that are coming in for this special Sunday. The idea is not just see how many we can have. We're not, you know, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to reach people, is to see them not just come one Sunday, but to see them get saved, to see them come back, to, give, to see them a part of the church. Wouldn't you love to see your friend and family member that you invite to be a part regularly of Temple Baptist Church? And so that's the idea. So let's make them feel welcome. Also, 
I want to say this. I, I looked around a while ago, and I appreciate your, uh, your sensitive spirit and your willingness to sit in different seats. Uh, one reason I love Temple Baptist Church, it's not a my seat, nobody else's seat type of church. You have a willingness to move around, and I appreciate that. Now, some of you, we're, we might have to pry you off a little. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's, it's good to have your spot, and I'll be honest with you as a pastor, it's helpful because if you're not there, I know you're missing. <clears throat> if you move around all the time, I'm like, oh, well, so-and-so wasn't here. My wife's like, yeah, they were. And I'm like, well, I didn't see them. And she'll say, well, they weren't sitting in the regular spot. So it's really helpful for a pastor when you have a consistency of where you sit. But there ought to always be a willingness to say, well, you know what? There's a first-time visitor in my seat. I can go somewhere else. And I appreciate that. Let's really be mindful of that for Friend and Family Sunday. If you have your favorite seat, just be willing to do that, okay? A growing church is always in transition. If we do have extra seats, that will either be over here in the wings, behind the organ and behind the piano. We might have some set back in the back. We'll kind of look at that and think about that a little bit this week. But we'll have metal chairs out. We've used all of our padded chairs that we ordered a year or two ago, so we don't have any more of those. And so we'll have metal chairs out. And maybe if you see a metal chair, maybe you can say, hey, you know what, I'm a younger family. And my wife and I can sit in a metal chair for an hour and 15 minutes, and we'll let a first-time visitor take a cushion chair. So if you can kind of keep some of those things in mind, that will be very helpful, okay? And then also, um, don't forget about our spring revival. Uh, that takes place three weeks from today. Uh, Sc Dr. Scott Cottle is the uh, president of Macedonia World Baptist Missions down in Georgia. It's a missions agency. And uh, Brother Cottle is a dear friend of mine. He has been a, such a help to me uh, spiritually. He's one of my mentors, and uh, he will be a tremendous blessing to you. He was with us last year. He's a tremendous singer, pianist, and he's a great preacher. And uh, you will be helped. I assure you, I want you to pray for the meeting, that God would use him to speak to all of our hearts, to stir our hearts to revival. And you say, Pastor, we just had revival back in January. What's going on? This is springtime. And it may not be that way on the calendar, but it is, the flowers are telling us it is. And so uh, it's, it's a spring revival, and I want you to be faithful each night. We'll have meals each night in Heritage Hall from 6 to 6.45. I want you to make plans to be there for that. They're wonderful home-cooked meals for free, just to be a blessing to your family. And uh, ladies, uh, we need your help with that, please. If you could just bring one dish for one of those nights, that would be tremendous. Usually there's 20 or so that help out with that. And we'll have a meeting next Sunday night for that. And uh, so keep that in mind, if you will, okay? Brother Holly, do you have any announcements? Come on, Brother Holly, make those announcements, and then also introduce our song for tonight. Just one announcement here. This is kind of a, this is something new. So I found out that Brother Kenny Baldwin is preaching at Crowen Baptist Church in a revival a uh, week from tomorrow and Tuesday. And uh, we'd like to take our teenagers to hear him. He is a great preacher and uh, just, I really want to have our young people under good preaching as much as possible. They get it here, but I'd love for them to hear it other places as well. So a week from tomorrow night, uh, that'll be the 13th. We're going to leave here about 6.15 from the church. We should be back around 9.30. Um, if you have trouble getting your young person here or you're concerned about getting them home, just let us know. But I want them to come. I'll step to midnight if we have to, if they can get here and uh, try to get them under that preaching. So again, next Monday night, we'll leave here at 6.15, be back around 9.30. Shelly Honey is going to sing our special for us tonight. <laughs>
enjoyed that, would you say amen? Appreciate that tonight. Mark chapter 8 in your Bibles this evening. Mark chapter 8. And appreciate the music program of the church and the balance of uh, the newer songs. I think the choir is going to sing a, be introducing a brand new song they've been learning next Sunday morning. You don't want to miss that. And I'm looking forward to that. So brand new songs and then also old songs. And Having that balance there, and I appreciate that. I love all the songs, all the music at Simple Baptist Church. Mark chapter 8, in your Bible tonight, look with me please in verse number 10. And we'll be reading down through verse number 15. And talking about, just briefly, 
a uh, subject the Lord has uh, placed upon my heart tonight. Mark chapter 8, and of course we're in our series of the gospel according to Mark. And trust that this has been a blessing to you. Mark is the shortest of all of the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four there. Uh, Mark is the shortest as far as the... Uh, for as I guess the content, but the chapters, and um, but a lot of information there, and I trust it's been a blessing to you. It's been very helpful to me. Mark chapter eight and verse number ten. If you found your place, would you say Amen? amen. Verse number ten. The Bible says, "In straightway he, that is Jesus, entered into a ship with his disciples and came into the parts of Dalmanutha." And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. By the way, be careful. God has ways to speak to our hearts, right? God has ways to get our attention uh, through really so many various ways. But be careful by... uh, living off signs, okay? Don't always look necessarily for signs. Uh, If you'll stay in the Bible and stay on your knees and stay in church, God has a way He'll guide and direct you and lead you. Uh, Don't always be looking for quote-unquote signs, okay? Uh, Look, verse 13, And He left them, and entering into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them, more than one loaf. And Jesus, in verse number 15, takes advantage of the situation and, and, and teaches them something here that I would like for all of us to learn tonight. Verse 15, And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. We'll stop reading there. Let's pray together. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to my heart about this the other day. And I I pray that you would use it to be a help to us tonight. And I pray that you would help us to grow spiritually as a result. Father, if there's someone not saved that does not know Jesus as their Savior, they do not know for sure if they were to die tonight, they would go to heaven. Father, please help them to trust Christ as their Savior tonight. And Father, I pray that if those of us who are saved, that you would help us to grow spiritually and help us to implement and apply these truths to our lives tonight. Give me clarity of thought, thought in mind and use me and help me, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. In this passage we just read, Jesus is warning his disciples here to beware of the leaven. What is leaven? Now, some of you know what leaven is, some of you don't, but leaven... Is a, is a biblical word, and is it a term uh, or, or a, a word to really describe what we would call yeast today. It is a substance or was a substance that would cause bread to rise. Now, it's very important that you listen to this, this portion of the introduction. Biblically, leaven is a symbol for sin. I'm going to read to you a New Testament passage. Listen carefully. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. The Bible says your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In other words, you put a little bit of yeast in that bread, you bakers. I don't know who, who bakes and who cooks and all of that. I learned uh, some time ago there's a difference in cooking and baking. I don't know all the details there. Uh, to me, I just eat it, all right? But to you that, that do the baking, uh, just you put at least a little yeast in there, and that causes that bread to be that fluffy, warm, delicious, praise the Lord, jelly slabbing thing uh, that you put in your mouth. It's wonderful, okay? But that yeast is what causes that to rise. And the Bible says, your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In the Bible, you'll remember this passage, Jesus uh, is used to, as a symbol of bread. Jesus said in John six thirty five, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. 
There's many different things that Jesus said, I am. He, was the, he said, I am the door, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But here in John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So bread, and, and really it's symbolic, it, bread feeds, it takes care of the hunger, it, it provides for the need, and that's what Jesus does for each one of us, doesn't he? He provides for us salvation through his sacrifice of himself. And Jesus is the bread of life. So in the Bible, bread represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, the leaven, or the yeast, if you will, is, represents sin. That is why we have the biblical word or biblical term, biblical term of unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. The Bible teaches us that, 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 that leaven or that yeast, that when it's put into the bread, it causes it to rise. It, it infiltrates it. It, 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 uh, it is something added to that bread. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. But again, in biblical uh, terminology and application, that leaven, that yeast, when it goes in the bread, it symbolizes sin. Jesus had no sin, true or false. He had no sin. He was sinless. He was spotless. And so with the bread representing who? Jesus, the leaven or the yeast representing sin, that is why we have the picture or we even use today in communion, unleavened bread. Do you ever wonder why the bread in our communion or the Lord's Supper, do you ever wonder why it's flat? Because there's no yeast in it. There's no leaven in it. It is unleavened bread. Why? Because that bread represents, it is symbolic of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ in whom was no sin. And so the Bible, bread represents Jesus. The leaven represents sin. Here, notice back in our story, Jesus tells his disciples, beware of the leaven. Beware of the leaven. The leaven referring to sin. In other words, Jesus is saying, beware of the Pharisees because it, there, there's sin involved there. There's, there's wrong involved there and they're teaching they are hypocrites. They are saying one thing and doing the next. And Jesus was very clear with them. He was very uh, upfront with them. He called them hypocrites because of their, uh, because of their uh, again, their hypocritical lifestyle. And he said, beware of Herod. And uh, a commentator I was reading after said, this speaks of the, the Roman culture that was present in that day. Beware of culture. Beware of religious ideas and religion is, 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 by the way, you can have religion and, and not the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And uh, I, I don't want to be religious. I, I want to be a, 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 a scriptural believer, a Christian, a child of God. And I understand talking about religion, I'm, and you should not try to correct every time you hear somebody say religion. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just simply uh, 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 understanding that uh, you can be religious and not be saved. Uh, but Jesus said here in Romans chapter 8 that we, that we as his disciples should be aware of the leaven. And that's what I want to talk to you about for just a few moments. Three things that I want to talk to you about being aware of the leaven or being aware, being aware of sin. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to notice the smallness of the leaven. The smallness of the leaven. Now, when we talk about leaven, remember we're talking about some type of, like a yeast type of thing. But figuratively, figuratively, that leaven uh, goes into our lives and it affects us in a negative way. Or sin, when, it is, when we allow sin to come into our mind, our heart, and our life, it affects us in a negative way. Can I get an amen? Now, I want to give you an illustration tonight. I brought my cooler. No, it's not my cooler. It's the churches. All right, so I've got this cooler tonight. I'm going to give you a little illustration. All right, and I don't know if you over there can see this or not. When we allow sin into our lives, it affects our lives completely. Now, this glass... Can y'all see that over there, Greg? Can you see that? Okay, you got your glasses on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fill this. This is 2% milk. This is what we drink at our house. And I'm going to save the rest of that for tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, now, this is pure, genuine motor oil. No joke. 
Does anybody want a sip? No, I'm just kidding. Too late. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Ready? Now, I'm going to pour this motor oil in this milk. Now, I don't know about you. My wife asked me. She said she knew I was going to use this illustration because she picked up the milk. And I, and I, I said to my wife, I said, I, I, we're going to use this. She said, don't you think you ought to use something more serious? And I thought to myself, I don't know anybody that would drink that right there. And if a kid comes up after service and drinks that, uh, hopefully they won't get too bad hurt. Uh, lubricate them a little bit on the inside. And, uh, but I'm not going to use poison or something like that. The all, the, the milk is going to represent our lives tonight. As you're looking at this, and let me take this motor oil off of this. This milk is going to represent our lives tonight, and the oil is going to represent the leaven. Uh, and it's going, I want you to understand that uh, even though leaven, I didn't pour, you understand, you watched me pour that. I poured a, almost a whole glass of milk, but I poured just a little bit of that motor oil into that milk. I didn't pour a whole lot in it. But it's a small amount, but you understand tonight, nobody in their right mind is going to take a sip of that after they saw what I just did to that. Nobody in their right mind, uh, you're, you're, if you're thirsty tonight, you're going to say, well, Pastor, I'll, I'll take a sip of that 2% milk, but I'm not about to take a sip of that 2% milk with 10W30 motor oil in it because it's just not going to be healthy for my body. I've got enough sense there. But when we allow... The milk represents our lives tonight. The oil, the motor oil represents the leaven or the sin that we allow into our lives. And even though we may allow a little bit of sin into our lives, you understand it will affect your whole life. I didn't pour all of that motor oil in there, but yet none of us would take a sip of that because we understand what's in it. And tonight, because I've taken a pure glass of milk, Poured it almost full, but poured the, a little bit of motor oil in it, and it has affected the whole appearance of that. In your mind, that will turn your stomach, if you're like me. In your mind, you would never taste that now because of the motor oil, and that's what sin does into our lives. When we allow a little bit of sin into our lives, it will affect us. I'm going to give you a verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, a little leaven, a little Leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Paul is speaking through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying a little bit of yeast is all it takes to cause the whole loaf of bread to be risen. And all it takes is just a small amount of sin into your life and it will ruin your whole life. It doesn't take a whole lot of sin to ruin your marriage. It doesn't take a whole lot of sin to ruin your testimony. It doesn't take a whole lot of sin, a whole lot of uh, sin into your life to, to, to completely do It's just a little bit, the smallness of the leaven. Notice the second thing, and that is the secrecy of the leaven. The secrecy of the leaven. Now, when it's mixed in, now, if, I don't know what you can see from there, but I can see a little bit of that oil circulating on the top because of the division of the milk and the oil. But from your perspective, I'm looking at it from the side, all I can see is the milk. And the, the truth of the matter is when, when yeast is, is mixed in to the, uh, to the dough when you're making bread, you're not going to see it. It's going to kind of disappear around the dough. And it's kind of a secret thing, and, and you're not going to be able to see it. You, you make the dough, and I've seen people, I've never done it myself, but I've seen people make the pizza, and I've seen people make the bread, and they're working with that dough, and perhaps you put a little yeast in, and then you keep on uh, uh, working with that dough to get it to where it needs to be to, to form that loaf to, before you put it in the oven. And that yeast, if you put it in, you keep on working with that dough, that yeast is no longer seen. You can't see it kind of disappears amongst the dough and that yeast is a secret agent within that dough. You don't, you don't eat the piece of bread and say, wow, what's some great yeast in this thing? It's a secret component. And the Bible teaches us beware of the leaven. The leaven is a secret thing. You can't always see the sin. It is a secret thing. And can I see that sin seeps in secretively into our lives? The devil is too smart 
for to, to pop up some type of major sin in your life. The devil seeps in sin just little bit by little into your life. And before long, it has just a little bit of it. The smallness affects the whole body. And he can just get in a little bit. And the more he can get you involved in doing something that you know is not right, the better off and the more he can ruin your testimony, your relationships, and everything else in your life. So it just takes a little bit of sin, not a whole lot of sin, to mess up our whole life. And then the secret of it. You know, there's sins that seep in secretly. Let me give you just a few here. Music, the wrong type of music, will affect you greatly. It will affect your whole life in a tremendous way. And it seeps in secretively. Let me tell you, give you a personal example. I, was, I grew up and I would listen to a, a oldies style music. Now, if you listen to music, that's your decision. And uh, whatever you decide to do is fine. With, with, you know, that's between you and the Lord. But the truth of the matter is, when I was growing up, I would listen to the oldies style music. I would listen to it in a nearby hardware store. And it was kind of groovy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of you... That are younger than me, have, you know, don't use that word. But you know, anyway, I thought that was going to be funny, but it just kind of fell flat there. But uh, yeah, there's some laughs. Thank you for being merciful to your pastor. And uh, I would listen to the oldies music when I was a teenager. And I got my car and I'd listen to a little bit of oldies music. And it kind of had a little bit of thump to it. It sounded pretty good and so forth. And, and then I would listen to uh, and get involved in some country. And again, but if you, whatever music you listen to, that's between you and the Lord. I'm not bashing you tonight. I'm just simply saying it will affect your life. And I would listen to country music. And then I got to listen to some pretty heavy stuff. And then I would get and listen to really whatever went. In my life, I would just I would just listen to it. I didn't care. I liked the beat. I liked the rhythm. I liked the word. I didn't care, and that's when I was saved. But I wasn't. My heart wasn't right with the Lord. I just listened to whatever. But it started with what seeming to be just just nothing much. But then that music became such a big part of our life. You realize music is a big part. Of, you realize some of the stores you go to, the type of music they're 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 throwing out there, it, it causes you to to want to buy something. It's, it's, it's moving, motivating type of music. You, there's a, there's some there, and, and, you know. It, it, let's 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 take for setting. When you come in church, we want a spirit of revival. So we're not going to play. When you come in church, sweet hour of prayer. Now that's a wonderful song. I love that song. But when I come to church, I'm wanting to be excited about what God has done and what God can do for me. I'm ready for the message, the preaching of the Word of God. I'm ready for the choir to stand up and sing, How great thou art with all of their heart, and I don't want to be put to sleep. There are wonderful songs for funeral services, and they're in the right timing for them. But you understand, music affects our lives in so many ways. It motivates us. It, 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 it really controls us. Can I say that? In many different ways. And music, the wrong type of music, if you allow it to, will seep into your life and it will affect your life. And if there's sin involved in that music, it will ruin your life. Music seeps in secretly. Lust seeps in secretly. Lust seeps in. Oh, it's just, it, it may not be just consumed with pornography to begin with. It could be just a simple a picture that you see on a billboard. It could be just something simple, that uh, some type of something on social media. It could be something simple. And that's what happens is sin seeps in secretively. Alcohol seeps in secretively. Alcohol. I, I am very just overwhelmed and discouraged that I hear of Christians in today's society saying there's nothing wrong with drinking alcohol when God's word is... So against that. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm so tired of hearing this crazy, wild, non-spiritual, well, Jesus turned water into wine. And you do not understand the full context of what's going on there. And I believe with all my heart that that was a juice. The wine in the Bible is generic. And the Bible teaches us that there's grape juice, 100% grape juice, like we have almost continuously in our refrigerator at home. 
100% grape juice is what we take at our communion. And I believe with all my heart, this is a personal belief. I, there's other preachers that are same like faith as I am and they would say it's alcohol and they have different understandings regarding that and so forth and how that went about and so forth and, and, and so forth. But I sincerely believe with all my heart that was grape juice because that uh, man who's the, who over that uh, wedding party was in his right mind. Uh, they had drunk a whole lot already during the party and then they were out. But he was very understanding of what they were drinking, that it was good wine. When you're drunk, you can't under, you don't, you're, you're, you're not in your right mind and all of that. There's a whole, that's a whole other message. The Bible teaches us that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 29 through 33, Who hath woe? Listen carefully. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, it and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. You know, a drunken man does not get drunk just like that. It starts with how many? One. You know, my pastor used to say, if it takes 10 beers to get you drunk, and you drink, if it takes 10 beers to get you drunk, and you drink one beer, guess what? You're one-tenth drunk. Think about that. For, you say, I don't know if that's in the Bible. What's well, pretty, a lot of wisdom with that. Because it starts somewhere. And it starts with the social drinking. And then it gets worse. And then it gets, well, let's just have a few beers and, and let's do this. And, and it seeps in. And before long, it's just a small amount. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I'm just doing one or two. And I know my limit, pastor. Hey, I know my limit, pastor. I'm just going to drink one or two. And by the way, I don't know, I, I don't know anything going on right now uh, with our church family right now. And I just wanted to, uh, to preach on it because I know it's out there. And you see it on social media. Well, listen, Pastor, we're, living under, we're not living under the law. We're not living in the book of Proverbs. We're living under God's grace. God put Proverbs in there for a reason. It's there for our learning. The Bible teaches us that its leaven is small. It's just a small amount, but it can ruin. A small amount can ruin our whole lives. It comes in secretively. Whatever area that may be. Oh, Pastor, it's just one or two. At the last, it biteth like. I'm paraphrasing there. It's going to bite you somewhere down the road. Worldly culture sneaks in. Worldly culture sneaks in. Mom and dad, be careful with what your kids are watching on TV. Be careful with what your teachers are teaching your school, at your school. It seeps in. Can you, can, we, can, you not see, can we not see that sin seeping in everywhere into our culture and if you're not careful, it will control your life. Just a small amount. It's secret. You can't really see all the... Oh, it really, honestly, it's up here at the top. It didn't even change the color down here. It's secret. You can't really even see it looking at it from back here. But that has destroyed that whole glass of milk. It will destroy our lives. Number three, and I'm done. And we'll go to baptism. Number three, the spreading of the leaven. The leaven spreads throughout the whole lump of bread, does it not? When, I'm not a baker. I'm, help, I'm asking you to help me, okay? Jacob, can you, are you a baker? To, you look like a baker. You look like a cooker. All right, so uh, when you put that yeast in, when you put that yeast in, it spreads throughout that whole lump of bread. And when sin is allowed into our lives, listen carefully, it will spread like wildfire. 1 Corinthians 5, 6, your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Let me ask you a question tonight. Or may, let, let me say this real quick. May we seek forgiveness from the Lord for any type of sin in our life. I'm thankful for 1 John 1, 9. If we... If we, it starts off, if we, if I were to stand up here and say, I am perfect and I've got it made, and I just want you to be like me, I would be lying through my teeth. Josh Bowles is not perfect. Josh Bowles is just a sinner saved by grace. And I'll be honest, now I would lie to you if I say I wasn't trying my best to be the best Christian I could possibly be, because I am. God knows my heart. I'm giving it all I've got. 
But the Bible teaches us in Ecclesiastes, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. We can work hard. We can do our best to make sure that we, uh, that we uh, be careful with our words and be careful with our thoughts and be careful with where we are and what we do and be careful and we'll still, at the end of the day, we'll still be guilty, no doubt, of some type of sin. No doubt in our life. No one's perfect. And John, the beloved, John said, if we, he included himself in that, this great disciple, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in other words, it doesn't matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, God is bigger. God can forgive you for your sins. I want you to do that tonight if you have sin in your life. I don't know your heart. This message is in our series. I didn't have this planned out for six, seven months. The Lord just spoke to my heart about it here recently as we're going down through this series. But I do know this. I'm going to give you this, and we're, do, we're going to be done. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and tw- through 27 says this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. I'm thankful for salvation through Christ. Amen. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Temple Baptist Church, you know who Temple Baptist is? It's not the blocks. It's not the brick. It's not the beautiful landscaping. It's you and me. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Do you know what God wants for you in your life? God wants us as the church to be holy and without blemish, to represent him the best way we can. The moment that we have sin in our life, to confess that, ask God to forgive us and keep on going the best we can for the Lord. But Jesus, I think we would be very unwise if we did not give heed to what Jesus taught his disciples here. Beware of the leaven. Beware of the sin. The the Pharisees, as he was teaching his disciples, they're they're wolves in sheep's clothing. And they got sin involved. They're, they're, They're teaching the tradition of men instead of the gospel. Beware of the culture of the Roman government. Beware of sin seeping into your life. It's a small amount that makes a big difference. Just small. Don't ever say, oh, it's just a small amount of sin. No. No, it'll ruin your whole life. A very small amount. Let's keep our heart right with the Lord. Small amount. It's secretive. It seeps in. It seeps in, and then it spreads like wildfire. The individual that's sitting in prison right now, I I wonder, and I visit the prison, I've and, and, and try to be a help, encouragement. And by the way, if it wasn't for God's grace, every one of us would be in prison right now. My pastor used to say, uh, if it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be either in hell or out on bail. That's the truth. In our lives, I guarantee that people who have messed up their life, I guarantee they could go back to where it kind of started unraveling because of the choices that they made of allowing just a little bit of sin in their life. Keep your heart right with the Lord. Keep your heart right with the Lord. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. The Holy Spirit is the main preacher. He's the big, he, he is the preacher. And He's the convictor. And He's the one who can inventory your heart. I can't see your heart. I don't know your mind. But if you have a need in your life, I want to encourage you to come and and get that right. If you're not saved tonight, it'd be a wonderful night to trust Christ as your personal Savior. Whatever the need is tonight, let's get things right with the Lord. Let's make sure our heart's right with the Lord. Let's stand our feet all over the building, heads bowed and eyes are closed. Brother Holly's going to sing as Brother Holly sings. Would you come tonight? Would you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart tonight? Have thine own way.
verse together as a church family tonight. Think about it. Give it all you've got. Sing it now. Have thine own way. Help us to live lives that are pleasing and honoring to you. Father, we know that that's done through keeping sin out. Help us with these things. We love you. Bless the remaining part of the service as we reassemble in Heritage Hall. Give us a great week in every way. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Baptism candidates, you can be dismissed. Head over to Heritage Hall. And while they're dismissing, they're heading over to Heritage Hall. I do want to say this, uh, I, want to, I want to thank you for being here, and I love you, and you're the best church in the world, and uh, I thank the Lord for you, I really do, I think about you, I lay down at night, and I think about, I think about you, and I think about, well, we're so-and-so, I hope they're okay today, and, and uh, so-and-so, and uh, I hope, I hope you know, so-and-so was encouraged, and, and I love you, I think about you all the time, and I thank the Lord for you, you're the best church in the world, and um, I want to encourage everyone to come over uh, to Heritage Hall and join us over there. And we'll just be just a moment. And uh, so I'll encourage our church family to do that. If you can't, I understand, but I encourage everyone to do so. Visitors alike, please join us. And if you don't know where it's at, just follow somebody. You'll get to the, either uh, their car or Heritage Hall 1, okay? And, uh, but I love you. God bless you. We'll see you over in Heritage Hall. You're dismissed.